Welcome to This Just In, a weekly news show highlighting the people and events in Newport News Public Schools, where STEM education provides students with hands-on learning activities at all grade levels. Teams of fourth and fifth grade students from each elementary school competed in an engineering design challenge sponsored by Verizon Wireless. Here's the video that presented the design challenge to the young engineers. Good morning, Newport News 4th and 5th graders. Welcome to Verizon Wireless, where we connect people to the endless possibilities of the digital world. Have you ever wondered how the words you speak during a phone call or type in a text message travel from your phone to a friend's phone in a matter of seconds? The process isn't as complicated as you might think. Let's say you want to send a text message to your friend. You type the message into your phone and hit send. Your message travels as wireless data to an antenna on top of the cell tower located nearest you. From the antenna, the data is no longer wireless. It travels through a big coax cable into the cell site located at the base of the tower. From the cell site, the data will travel through high-tech fiber optic cables to the mobile switching center. All the calls that are made in Hampton Roads come through this mobile switching center. The mobile switching center knows exactly which cell tower your call came from and which cell tower is closest to your friend. If all goes well, the process will reverse and your friend will receive the message in a matter of seconds. Yep, thanks, got it, Carrie. Hey, big factors in the speed of these messages are the towers. So let's take a closer look at the different types of cell towers. You're already familiar with this kind, which are called lattice towers. They're self-supporting, freestanding towers that stand between 200 to 400 feet with square or triangular base. The monopole tower, as the name suggests, features a single tubular mast. This tower requires the least amount of space on the ground and it doesn't exceed 200 feet. Guide towers are a straight rod supported by cables and they can reach up to 2,000 feet. This is the cheapest type of tower to build. Now, you have to look very closely to find the last type of tower, which are concealed towers. They're designed to blend in with the natural surroundings by taking on the appearance of trees, art, or other structures. Civil engineers who work at Verizon must carefully analyze each potential cell tower site to determine which type of tower is the best one to build. Cell towers must be tall enough so they can receive and send signals to other towers and devices. A tower that's too short won't be able to cover enough distance. However, if the tower is too tall, then it becomes a danger for aircraft flying by. So determining the correct height of the cell tower is extremely important. A cell tower must be built strong so it doesn't fall on nearby buildings. Installed on the top or side of the tower may be a microwave dish or antenna. A tower must be designed and built so that it can support the weight of either without falling over. Today, you will apply what you've learned to solve an engineering design challenge we here at Verizon Wireless believe you are the best engineers to complete the challenge. Good luck, fourth and fifth graders. Elementary students from across Newport News Public Schools received inspiration from Verizon Wireless to build their own Tower of Power. During the Engineering Design Challenge held at Newsom Park Elementary, fourth and fifth grade student teams from all 24 elementary schools put their communication and STEM skills to the test 
to see who could construct a cell tower and earn the most points to earn a citywide victory. The NNPS STEM team partnered with Verizon Wireless to present the first engineering design challenge of the school year. In order to win the challenge, student engineers earned points for the greatest amount of antenna weight that the tower could support before collapsing. Using a limited number of materials, students took on the role of civil engineers to build a freestanding lattice tower at least 50 centimeters tall. Tower appearances and building techniques were almost as varied as the number of teams, with creativity interwoven with ingenuity. Verizon representatives were available to give helpful hints and encourage the teams along the right construction track. Also, student consultants from Heritage High School's Governor STEM Academy came around to the teams for added support. Newsom Park won third place, Jenkins built the second place tower, and Greenwood Elementary topped out at first place, earning more than double the points as the third place winner. For a special surprise ending, the Verizon Foundation announced a generous donation of $10,000 to support Newport News Public Schools STEM education. The grant will fund materials for engineering design challenges, STEM labs at two elementary magnet schools, and the annual STEM Community Day, which attracts nearly 10,000 students and community members from Hampton Roads. Sixth graders at Gildersleeve Middle School rotated through four different challenges during the school's first ever STEM competition day. Four teachers on the sixth grade Sea Turtles team organized the day's activities, allowing students to use a range of STEM skills by building an exhilarating roller coaster, test piloting customized paper airplanes, coding with ozobots, and engineering towering structures. In each classroom, students received an introduction to their challenge before beginning the design and planning process. By working in teams, students were able to sharpen their collaboration, listening, and leadership skills. After designing and building their creations, student engineers were able to make adjustments to their designs, allowing them to problem solve and think critically. Spending a day thinking outside of the box was a fun learning experience for the students, while the teachers enjoyed seeing their classes fully engaged in practical, hands-on activities. Participating in each challenge allowed students to use knowledge from different content areas and pool their ideas to succeed together. <laughs> High school students have an excellent opportunity to increase their knowledge and skills in STEM education while preparing them for relevant, high-paying careers. Students in Newport News Public Schools who are interested in pursuing a career in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math have the option to attend one of the country's top STEM-focused schools. At Heritage High School, success in the 21st century is well within reach through the Governor's STEM Academy. STEM is a forward-thinking process that thoroughly prepares students for the high-paying jobs that are abundantly available now and in the future. At Heritage High School's Governor's STEM Academy, students are immersed in STEM culture with hands-on activities, job shadowing and internship experiences, project-based courses, and the opportunity to gain industry certifications and advanced training in multiple career pathways. This multifaceted approach expands options for students, allowing them to further their education after high school or to transition smoothly to full-time employment. Students enrolled in Heritage's Governor's STEM Academy have access to a range of specialized courses in three career strands, engineering and robotics, networking and cybersecurity, and computer science and game design. These courses supplement the student's enrollment in English, math, science, social studies, physical education, and world languages. Students enrolled in engineering and robotics will focus on courses in electronics and engineering while preparing for possible careers in aerospace, architectural, and chemical engineering. Students focused on networking and cybersecurity will be prepared for careers as a network administrator, cyber forensics analyst, IT specialist, or security software developer 
by taking advanced computer networking courses. And students pursuing careers in computer science and game design will complete honors courses in advanced programming and modeling and simulation to advance as a 3D animator, web designer, multimedia producer, or software engineer. Heritage High School Governor's STEM Academy moves beyond the basics by offering students even more learning options after school and through the summer months. Incoming freshmen can explore their future possibilities through the Stimulating Minds Summer Enrichment Program. Students in all grades can participate in cyber camps, FIRST Robotics, drone team competitions, and STEM-focused clubs and activities. Mentorships are provided on-site through Newport News Shipbuilding's Career Pathways, while off-site, internships and job shadowing offer real-world learning experiences. If you're interested in jumpstarting your future STEM career by attending Heritage High School Governor STEM Academy, talk to your school counselor or contact Heritage High School. If you're interested in magnet and specialty programs for elementary, middle, or high school students, Newport News Public Schools has programs focusing on a variety of areas, such as environmental science, communication and performing arts, aviation, global studies, as well as science, technology, engineering, and math. You can find out more about the magnet programs and any upcoming open houses by visiting the Magnet and Specialty Programs webpage at nnschools.org. Beginning November 1st, Magnet application links will be available, and the deadline for applying to a Magnet or Specialty Program is January 5th. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of This Just In. And check out more fun and informative videos at nnpstv.com to see the many great things happening in Newport News Public Schools. Thanks for watching.